Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am going to show you today how I do a raised stencil on some drawer fronts. So these little bedside table behind me um, is actually going to be for my daughter. She needs some storage in her room. She's chosen a colour, she says she wants them plain, but we don't do plain. So I'm going to use a stencil with some Dixie Mud to add a little bit of detail on the front. So as always we're going to start with a little bit of prep. I'd already got Nancy to clean these outside so that's already been done. I use Dixie Bell's white lightning and I do cover it in other videos if you want to see how I do that. I'm just giving these a light scuff sand now with my electric sander and that's just because I scuff sand everything before I paint it anyway and I do find that Dixie Mud does cling on slightly better to a lightly scuffed surface. And then we can move on to the raised stencil bit. So I'm going to use the Morocco stencil from Dixie Bell. This is a really generously sized stencil. So I am going to attempt to do all three drawers in one hit. Uh, I'm going to tape down the stencil. The idea with pretty much any stencil, whether you're doing a raised stencil or just a standard stencil with paint, is to keep your stencil in the same position, so don't get it to move around. I am using a little bit of tape here because I'm gonna need two hands to apply the Dixie Mud. So usually, if I don't tape down, it's because I can hold the stencil with my other hand and hold it steady. But in this case, I've got a pot of Dixie Mud and a spatula in the other hand. So once your stencil is in place, then you can start applying your Dixie Mud. If you don't want to use masking tape to hold your uh, stencil in place, you can also use like a spray adhesive as well. Um, I don't have much success with them. I prefer a little bit of tape, but it's personal preference. And then all you need to do is just grab a spatula. I'm using the Dixie Mud spatula with this one, which is a plastic spatula, and then thinly apply your Dixie Mud, which comes in three colors, brown, white, and black. I'm using the white one because I do plan on painting this you can also tint them with paint a little bit if you do want to make your own color um, you just thinly apply it over the top of the stencil I'm just concentrating this on the very front surface of the drawer these have got like a panel section on the drawer and then like a recessed border around each drawer I'm only going to do this raised pattern on that very sort of front facing surface and you just need to apply a very, very small amount and try and get it as smooth as you possibly can. If there are any lumps or little bits in it that aren't entirely smooth, you can leave that. Once it's dry, it stands perfectly well. Um, and you only need a very small amount of this product. I think the number one problem people have with a ray stencil is they use too much product and it doesn't sort of go very well. It starts seeping through and you don't get a very crisp pattern. And once you've got that thin layer over the top, just remove your tape. I always take the tape off first so you're not wrestling with it. And then pull the stencil off in an upwards motion so that you don't smudge the pattern as you're removing it. So as you can see here, whilst the mud is still wet, I'm just using my finger and just tidying up the edges. Now, if you didn't wanna do this, you could tape off any areas that you didn't wanna get any of the mud on. So for example, I could have taped off the sort of um, recessed area around the drawer, but I didn't because it's me. So I'm just using my finger to clear it up. And then once it has completely dried down, which can take between two hours right up to, you know, overnight, it just depends on the thickness that you've applied the mud and it also depends on the sort of humidity and all that kind of thing. I always try and leave my Dixie mud to dry overnight just to be on the safe side, um, but it does sand down very, very nicely. Just make sure it is completely dry. I'm using a very fine sanding sponge just to knock any sharp edges off the um, stencil, just to make it nice and smooth to touch. If you do use anything too abrasive, just be very, very careful because you Dixie Mud is, is very fine and you might end up sort of taking too much of the ray stencil off. And 
and that is how you do a race stencil that's all there is to it obviously you can choose your own stencil design and apply it to whatever part of the furniture that you require a raised pattern on i'm just showing you on these particular chest of drawers um, that I did on the on the draw fronts, but you can apply that technique uh, to basically any surface you like. And then just to finish this piece off to show you what it looked like uh, when I'd done it, um, I went in with a primer next, and that's because I didn't know which paint line my daughter was going to choose the colour from. So I applied a coat of Dixie Bell's water-based primer, which is called Boss. I chose the grey colour and I just gave it a coat of that just to make sure we were covered for any bleed through issues. But in the end, Nancy chose a colour from the silk mineral paint line, which is called Harbour. Now, the silk paint doesn't actually require a primer because it has one built into the paint. However, I'd already completed that step, so I went ahead and applied two coats of paint all over the piece. Silk paint also doesn't require a top coat, so I could just apply two coats of this and it was done. I also changed the handles, and here's a little close-up of all that texture on the drawer fronts and the final shot i hope you liked the short video and found it useful and make sure if you do have any questions drop those in the comments below and i will catch you next time